Hello, welcome to surgical asepsis and sterile technique. During this course, you will gain a strong understanding of evidence-based surgical asepsis and sterile technique procedures. It is important you have a good understanding of the concepts in order to use the critical thinking skills that are necessary for every surgical procedure. Let's begin with some surgical history. Surgeries can be tracked back thousands of years. This picture is depicting an Egyptian male circumcision that occurred during the mid fifth century BC. The Egyptians practiced circumcision for the sake of cleanliness and were performed the procedure during the male's pre-adolescent phase and not in infancy. An important note, anesthesia did not exist at this time. So as you can see, most members of the surgical team were busy holding down the writhing patient. Fast forward almost 6,000 years, and as you can see, not much has changed. At this time, the biggest advancement was done by Amwa Par, a young French army surgeon. He began tying off bleeding vessels rather than burning them with a hot iron or boiling oil. Patients healed much better with the sutures and hot oil was never used again. Now here is where we see a major breakthrough in surgical practice. Louis Pasteur was a French chemist and microbiologist. His research led to remarkable breakthroughs in the understanding that microorganisms can cause disease. Joseph Lister was a British surgeon and a pioneer of antiseptic surgery. He promoted the principle of antiseptic surgical care by introducing phenol to sterilize surgical instruments. The this also sterilized um, it also cleaned the patient's skin, sutures, the surgeon's hands, and the ward. This picture depicts the phenol being sprayed onto the surgical field. There are three terms covered in the last slide that are important to understand before entering the room of any modern surgical procedure. Microorganisms, asepsis, and sterile. Microorganisms are living things that cannot be seen without a microscope. Now, some microorganisms are helpful and even necessary for our survival, but some microorganisms referred to as microbes are dangerous and can be deadly. Sepsis is when these microbes enter the body and the body's immune system cannot fight them off. The microbes continue to grow and multiply, also referred to as infection. And eventually this will cause death if not stopped. So a sepsis is the process of removing or protecting against microbes. Sterile is free from any living microorganisms, good or bad. The state of sterility is difficult to attain and to maintain. It takes strict adherence to rules, standards, and guidelines that we will address throughout this entire course. Molière was a poet in the 1600s. He stated, nearly all men die of their medicines, not of their diseases. At this time in history, prior to Pasteur and Lister's discoveries, Medicine caused as many deaths as it cured. 200 years later, hospitals were the delivery rooms of the urban poor. And in 1840 at Bellevue Hospital in New York, almost half the women giving birth contracted purpural or childbed fever. 80% of these women died. Looking at this picture, you can see how this may happen. A single doctor would move from one patient to the next without washing hands, because at this time in the um, early 1800s, we didn't know about washing hands. Um, with, this would spread infection from one patient to the next, 
infecting each new mother. Thanks to medical pioneers who came before us, we now understand the importance of removing microbes or protecting from them. This is why we have specific guidelines for even the most basic skills, such as washing your hands, putting on surgical attire, and how to properly clean an OR between procedures. We know that every action in surgery is connected to a sepsis and sterile technique. This knowledge has allowed us to make remarkable strides in medicine. Currently, surgical site infections, or SSIs, occur in only 2 to 4% of patients. And this is patients undergoing surgical procedures. This is a drastic difference from what we saw in the, in the sides prior, where 50% would die of infection. Although this is a drastic improvement from where we began, SSIs still remain a significant cause of concern. Here you see a picture of an SSI. SSIs are the leading cause of readmission to the hospital following surgery. In 2018, there were 129 surgical procedures performed. Now that means that up to 5.1 million patients suffered from an SSI and approximately 154,800 patients died as a consequence of the SSI. This is clearly something that we need to be very aware of. During every module of this course, I'll ask you to use critical thinking skills to determine where microbes may enter a surgical procedure. While the surgeons work hard to correct problems with human anatomy, it will be our responsibility to focus on the aseptic and sterile technique of every procedure. <laughs>